everybody, it's Josie. Welcome back to Cedar Creek Homestead. Well, the humidity's lifted. It's still hot outside, but it is so much better than it was last week. We're able to stay out a little bit longer, get some projects done. Last week, it was just out feeding water, look, well, uh, look to the animals, make sure they were okay, get in a garden and do just what we had to do, and then back in. And so here, the last few days, we've been able to to work and get some projects done and uh, yesterday was one of those days uh, and I found myself out cleaning the farm truck the the old farm truck my nephew's gonna buy it and um, I needed to get some things out of there everybody else was off the farm doing other things and so I was here by myself and just kind of you know taking it easy and 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 getting these projects done and, of course, you know, you always find a, an old rusty coffee can in the truck with screws and nails. And you can usually find pliers and rolls of bell and twi uh, wire. And, and I found a pen and pencil where Howie took notes uh, out in the pasture when he was watching over the cows and calves and all kinds of different things. And I'd worked my way around to the front of the truck and was getting stuff out of the glove box and making sure that there was uh, whatever kind of important papers needed to stay with the truck and what I needed to keep. And I'd put my hand up on the inside of the truck and and was working. And this red wasp flew out at me and, and uh, I kind of shoot it and then another one come flying out at me and I realized that they were trying to sig send me a message and I started looking around and looked over at my hand and y'all I had st I had my hand my poor little old bare hand was stuck right on top of a red wasp nest wasp nest uh, covered with those little uh, the larvae, wasp larvae, and all kinds of red wasp all over the top of it. And of course, it was hot in there, and so and they were agitated. And so I pulled my hand away real fast and stepped back, and here the wasp came, just surrounded me, and was flying all around my head and kind of, you know, got coming at me and. And I don't know why I do it. I do it every time I come in contact with wasp. I just kind of do like this, like I'm bracing myself for impact. So in my mind, I'm thinking, here it comes. I'm getting ready to really get stung a bunch of times. And it's going to be my face and my bare arms and my neck. And I'm just going to, I'm ready for it. And it didn't happen. There's no way, guys, except that the Lord kept me that I not get stung a bunch of times because they were angry and they were swarming me and I had stuck my hand right in the big middle of them and they were upset, but I didn't get stung one time, not on my hand, not on my fingers, my face, my neck, my arms, not one sting. And I kind of backed away real slowly and shut the truck door and Got, went and got in my in my farm truck and kind of sighed uh, did a sigh of relief and said a little prayer of thanksgiving that I didn't get stung and then I thought you know what I'm here on the farm by myself today what would have happened had I got stung and it got me to think about that's what I want to talk about Tuesday night not getting stung but First aid on your homestead and looking well to the ways of your homestead. Work looking well to the ways of your home. How this plays into it. Now we always talk about water being number one source, food, and other things. And we need to add first aid to that. You know, there's all kinds of things that can happen. And every person individually, uh, your, your home, your farm is different from the next person's. You have... Uh, you have different uh, sets of circumstances that you run into. Here on our farm, we have chemicals that fight weeds and pests. We have animals that are two and three and four times bigger than what we are and can do lots of damage. 
We have uh, medications for our animals that if a little child was to get a hold of it could be danger. We have equipment that's running. There's always need to be aware of your surroundings. And so let's talk a little bit about these things. One thing that we need to be aware of is know where your shutoffs are for your water, for your gas, for your electric. Know where they are and know how to turn them off. That is something that um, Howie has explained to me, showed it to me, but I can tell you that I need a refresher on some of those things. Because if you don't do it, you know, you can kind of say, yeah, I rem kind of remember where they told me to do that. But I think that it would do good for, I know it would for me. I need a refresher. But know where your shutoff valves are for emergencies because anything can happen. Um, you know, your hot water heater can act up and you need to turn that water off. There can be an emergency with your gas lines and you need to get that gas turned off. Um, assess, assess your residence, the place where you live. Know each individual in your family and those that visit your home a lot. Know are there Things that you need to be aware of. Are there allergies? Are there um, are there food allergies? Are there allergies with wasp? Howie was allergic to wasp and he was allergic to bees and to honey. And so we need to be cautious with those things. And he, uh, the doctors told us that uh, to keep Benadryl in all of our vehicles and I keep it in my purse. And he, they told us at the emergency room, first thing, I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm just telling you what they told us. Get that Benadryl to, to, you know, get you rolling and get to the hospital if you don't have an EpiPen or whatever it is the doctor prescribes for you. And so, you know, know, know your family members. Know your community around you and um, what, what kind of medical issues that already exist. But then know your people and know your area around you and the things that can pose a problem. Here on our homestead, we have uh, we have ponds, and um, you know ponds uh, have their own set of dangers. Yes, they're there for the cows to drink. Yes, they're there. We um, we have plans for one of our ponds to become a, a pond that we stock for fishing. Those all pose their own sets of good things, but they can also be emergency things in the summertime. There are always snakes out at the ponds, but uh, water moccasins, yuck, and you need to know about those things. In the winter time, those ponds freeze over, but I guarantee in the south where I'm at, unless you have an extended period of really extremely cold weather, you cannot walk out on a southern pond farm and expect it to hold you up. There's a danger in that, and you need to make sure that your children and your grandchildren know the dangers of that. Um, the equipment that we have, we need to know what are um, the dangers of that equipment, our tractors, the equipment that we pull behind the tractors. Um, what kind of safety equipment does your uh, your your machinery uh, request that you use. Do they want you to use goggles? Do they want you to ear use ear protection, eye protection? You know, um, what else is there? There's always chemicals around on a farm. There's chemicals. Um, you know, wear those gloves. Wear the eye protection. Uh, don't inhale those fumes. My own self, I will tell you that, oh, it wasn't very many years after we had been married um, that I had some ammonia and I was cleaning in the bathroom. And I was cleaning my shower and I was overcome by those fumes. And it made me very, very, very sick. And so I don't keep, because I'm not comfortable with ammonia, 
I don't keep it at my house. I just, I know a lot of people use ammonia and they, you know, they'll swear by it. I don't keep it because I'm not, I've got sick with it and I'm not comfortable with it. But there, you're, if you keep chemicals at your home, you need to know the dangers of chemicals. You need to know most, uh, most of your chemicals, like what we keep here, the big, the big containers of stuff that are for pest control, pesticides, weed control, herbicides, whatever it is that you happen to have, most of those will have a material safety data sheet with them. Keep those, put those on file so that you know what that product, the company that made that product is telling to you to do in safety. You know, keep that on hand and it wouldn't hurt you to read it. Don't just stick it back and wait till an emergency arises to read it. Read it, have a little bit of knowledge about the product. Sometimes you find out that that's a product that you don't really want to use at all. If you read the safety information, you'll see that it doesn't fit you. It's too dangerous for you to mess with, and you'll get rid of it. Also, now's a good time to go in and assess your first aid. Now, we, we assess our other supplies. So now, let's do that too. Go in and just take a good, hard look at all the things that you have on your shelf. Some people, all they keep stocked is a box of Band-Aids, and they've had them for like 20 years, and you go to put one on, and the adhesive won't stick, and the Band-Aid falls off. Well, I guarantee you they come up with a lot better products in that amount of time and they've got band-aids now that you can get that when you put it on it sticks and it stays on and we need band-aids here that covers wounds um, because we're out and we're working in the dirt and we're doing things and you need to keep you know you need to keep stuff protected I would say that you need to make sure that you have uh, products for uh, you know, putting on wounds, antibacterial stuff, and you know, peroxide and alcohol. There's so, so many products available for first aid that it would, that it would take me forever. And every list is going to be different. You have needs that's different than, than my needs. And, you know, there may be things that you're allergic to. Uh, for instance, there are some Band-Aids <coughs> that really irritate my skin, the adhesive on it, latex, different things bother my skin. And so there are products that I use that you may not necessarily use. Um, you know, and your family, you know in your family that you have situations arise that, uh, that you need special medications for. Now, if you ever get a toothache or an earache on a Friday or Saturday and you cannot get in anywhere until Monday or Tuesday you know that you're suffering with a toothache or you're suffering with an earache those hurt so bad so it's always good to have that kind of stuff on hand as well have your emergency supplies it's important to know what you have but it's also important to be organized. You don't want to have somebody with a, a serious injury, a cut or a burn or a bite or anything that you know you're going to have to treat quickly, first aid treat, before you get them to the hospital and go in there to wherever your medical, my medical supplies are in my bathroom on a shelf, but uh, wherever your medical supplies are, and you're just tearing through your medical supplies trying to find that particular thing that you need. It's important to be organized. Now, I'm not saying you go in there on my shelf that everything is just prim and proper, but I do have it kind of organized in sections where I know that my band-aids are here and my gauze is here and my, um, you know, the, uh, the burn, I have all my burn stuff together and I have all of my, um, uh, stuff that would be for skin irritations and I have things for the stomach here and I just try to keep them separated into those categories. Um, and I have a big, big supply of stuff, but then I also have smaller 
first aid kits that we tried. I have one that that is my medical supply. That big, you know, I have a big shelf that Howie built me <coughs> that has all of my supplies. Kind of like a pantry, only for first aid stuff. And I have all of it organized in sections like, like I just said, stomach, ears, uh, sore throats, all of that. <coughs> and equipment, you know, your blood pressure cuffs and your thermometers and all those things. And then I have individual, I have a, I have a pretty good size first aid kit that I keep in a separate area so when there's a medical emergency arises somebody needs treatment because they cut their cell I can go to that first aid kit and I can get it out that's also the kit that I carry if we have to go to our uh, tornado shelter I go and I get that first aid kit and it goes with us to the to the shelter we try to keep first aid in all of our vehicles to keep a, a first aid kit so if we were out on the highway or out we needed some first aid or someone else needed some first aid it would be a good idea to in your shop if you have a shop or a barn or a garage to keep a first aid kit there that's what we try to do so that it's easy access easy to get to close and we're able to um, respond quickly because that's what first aid is to quickly respond now you might be in a situation like what we're in we live in a rural area um, we are out in the county so when you call you have to uh, what I normally do is call uh, the city because the we're not too f we are considered county but we're not too far from the city uh, which would be the lo closest to us but usually if if you call they will um, say well we'll call county and so we have to wait on the county to respond then our local ambulance the closest ambulance service that we have they've went out of business so now our ambulance service has to come from a, a from a longer distance so you know there's always the possibility that you're really going to have to do that first aid for uh, quite a little bit before help can get to you and so um, having those supplies knowing where they're at and being able to get to them relatively quickly can save somebody's life that being said the next thing that I would say when you get your medical supplies now all of us have varying degree uh, have varying degrees of abilities when it comes to medical we have nurses in our family and I have no doubt that they could assess the situation that's what they're trained to do and they can say we need to do this and this and this and of course I'm coming from a mama point of view so I'd say okay they're bleeding I need to do this they're um, they swallowed this I need to do this that's the way that I would look at it and so uh, we we do all of that but it's also important to have um, first aid manuals on hand now this is what I think have those first aid manuals but crack them open and read them now I know you're not going to probably want to read it from cover to cover but read up on those things so that you've kind of got an idea wouldn't it be awful if your child is crying there's no way you can get them to the hospital without doing some kind of first aid first and you're having to run to your bathroom and dig through the shelves looking for all the stuff getting these supplies out oh then pulling a book off the shelf thumbing through it trying to find what it is that you're uh, trying to uh, to do the first aid on it would be miserable and so that's why I think that you need to have a little bit of knowledge do a little bit of training our church uh, used to have have them come in once or twice a year and we did CPR training and um, you know how he uh, how he was part of the fire department so they they did training and um, I don't think it hurts us and I have my little grandson on the way in December I can't wait and so I'm gonna brush up on some of those things and um, 
to make sure that I really have a good understanding because um, it's been a while have a good understanding of infant first aid infant CPR infant things that you need to do and um, you know they have devices they have this new um, device that I've been seeing advertised and um, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it is for babies, for children, for um, it's an adult that you can use it as adults too. You can use it on yourself even. And it's this product that if you're choking, that it, it can be used instead of the Heimlich maneuver. This product can be used and um, it's it's not really a plunger because to me a plunger would push something down this actually sucks it out uh, whatever it is they're choking on it sucks it fits on your on the face and it sucks it out and I'll try to I'll try to find it and put it in the description if I can if not I'll I'll find it later and and tell you what it is but anyway I'm I'm considering getting that uh, to have on hand and there are so many products I know that it would probably be impossible to have everything that you could possibly use but I'm working on having as much stuff that I can because what if there were no doctors what if there were were no hospitals and that sounds far out there far-fetched I understand that but remember last year when the um, sickness was so crazy you couldn't get into your doctor's office you if you went to the hospital people were afraid that you would get exposed to to the virus and all these kind of things and so we saw a little bit of about what some of it might be like and so um, it, t it pays to brush up on knowing how to take care of non-threatening uh, non-life threatening emergencies things that we can take care of ourselves, things that we can do the first uh, as a first step and get them on to the hospital or to the doctor next you know uh, we just we just need to keep looking well to the ways of our household and make sure that we are brush up on all these things so we have a lot to do we have another project another assignment uh, we went through our pantry and we assessed our pantry so let's look through our first aid kits let's see if we need to add some antibiotic ointment let's see if we need to add uh, stuff you know now uh, it's summertime everybody's you know we're gung-ho schools getting ready to start you know, um, Kleenexes are going to be out there, hand sanitizer, uh, you know, they're going to start talking about cold and flu season before long. We know the virus is still going on. So um, let's look at and see what kind of products we have. Look what we need to continue to keep adding to our shelf. We know that last year when all of this was had started that... Uh, the antibacterial stuff couldn't be found. You couldn't find alcohol and peroxide. You couldn't find any uh, any of that kind of stuff. So you know, just kind of take a take uh, take a survey, take take assessment of what you have. Look at your look at your supplies and see where you're weak, and start adding to it. And uh, get your first aid manuals. And I, um, I can't really show you. I'm preaching to myself too because I have a first aid manual, uh, but I need to, I need to uh, get a, get a better one. And so, uh, if you've got any suggestions for us that you have a really good first aid manual, we'll leave it down in the comments below and tell us what you use. I know a lot of you are into oils, essential oils, and those kind of things, and I don't have a lot of experience with that. And um, a lot of us grow calendula and chamomile, and, and you guys have been so kind to send me <clears throat> some teas for my throat and my lungs, and I appreciate that. Uh, you also, I'll tell you another thing that you might do for your first aid and for your, um, for the days ahead is get you some good herbal books 
and begin to study those and look around your home and see the things that you might have growing mullen and and different uh, things and i've got elderberry growing and things that you can do to keep your family healthy and to keep them safe and guys i love y'all i i feel like i have talked 100 miles an hour i don't really know why unless i'm still excited over the fact that i didn't get stung by those old mean red wasp but let's assess our first aid let's read our first aid manuals get us some good first aid manuals read them practice up on it see what they've added to uh to the first aid supplies since we've bought our last ones if you got band-aids that are 20 years old and they don't stick anymore it's time to get you another box of band-aids and uh, add to your skills and be aware of your surroundings and the emergencies that can happen around you keep those uh, material safety data sheets that'll tell you what you do and um, how to keep you safe when you're using those products and uh, Keep looking well to the ways of your household. Till next time, guys, this is Josie. I love you guys. I really do. Thank you for all the kind things that you do for me, the words of encouragement and the blessings and the prayers that you offer up for me. I can always use them. And somebody was praying for me yesterday when I encountered that wasp nest. Until next time, guys, we're gone.